The day he was born, it was 8.57 on a Thursday, June 26, 2014. Second child, so I did kind of have an idea of what the whole labor and delivery part was going to be like. I think I was in labor for like 20 minutes, so super, super easy. Everything going according to plan. Everything was really great that day. I knew the moment that I saw Fletcher that he was really, really special. Like. All moms really say that, but there was just, just something about Fletcher that, that was really sweet. They came and got him for his hearing test. The, uh, the screening came through and they said that they had some problems. And I think the main problem that they were having was breaking the news to us. The screening tests come back and they say, we're going to refer you. And that's the first time I heard Boys Town outside of, you know, living in Omaha. You know, the hardest thing that any parent would face is somebody telling them that their child is anything but perfect. So this is, this is a big moment and it's a lot to get past. Shocked and devastated. I cried. I'll never forget it. I allowed myself a couple days to be sad, um, but then the way Aaron and I work, what do we got to do? We got, what do we got to do? Where do we need to learn? What do we, who do we talk to? I will never forget the first time I walked into the lead center and knew that that place was meant for where, where I needed to be. I needed to be there. I knew that that was, it was comforting. It was um, colorful. It was bright. It was cheery for us. And um, they knew everything we needed when we got there. The groundwork is definitely laid out for you. Yeah. And it's, it's up to you to trust them. And, and the best thing we ever did was trust them. You know, you, you put the life of your child in their hands. And as soon as we found out he was able to get cochlear implants, then we faced the decision, do you or don't you? And there's definitely, definitely two sides to that decision. And we weighed those very heavily. We did a lot of research. We didn't really need a whole lot of arm twisting. We knew, we knew um, Aaron, well, both of us were very, sciencey like we would medically um, we want to make sure we have the best for our, our kids and if that's something medical or hardware or anything let's do it let's get it done it was like well no kidding it, it's like if you need glasses you get glasses if you need cochlear implants to hear you do that so it was a, it was a pretty easy decision for us after being in the community and involved with the deaf community a little more we decided to implant and he can decide later on whether he wants to use them or not. I'm not gonna not give him that decision. We actually considered Dr. Kong part of our family. We still do, but we saw him more than some of our family members for a while. Oh, it's so hard to describe just how perfect he was for us. Um, he knew, he took Fletcher, played with him in the chair, just made us super calm, asked us questions while bouncing him around. And Dr. Kong <laughs> is great. He's, he's a funny guy. I mean, he walks into the room and you are instantly put at ease because the guy knows what he's doing. I and mean, you know, if, if, you, if you jump on an airplane, you want the best pilot. And Dr. Kong is the best pilot for this. It was two separate surgeries because at 10 months, it, it's two hours per implant and four hours under anesthesia would have been too long for a 10-month-old. So they did the left one first at 10 months and the right one at just under a year, two months later. So the first one was, it was tough. You know, it's, your child's going in for a shot, you worry. And this is a much, much bigger procedure than a shot. He bounced back quick. You know, I'm, I'm expecting all these all these drugs to come at, at us, you know, painkillers, and they said, Tylenol, you should be ready to go in about 12 hours to a day. And he was. So the second one's much easier, but the first one was, you know, not a lot of sleep the night before. Activation day was stressfully great. It's a bit of a misconception because you, you, everybody's seen the videos and you see that moment 
where that moment comes after about an hour and a half of gradual tiny little moments. And I was holding him and she's like, okay, it's going on. That was his first sounds and you could tell that he wasn't sure what was going on, but he kind of liked it. Like he kind of finally woke up to, to noise and it was amazing. I didn't like cry and have that big reaction like you kind of see on YouTube, but for me and for us, it was perfect. It was exactly what what our day needed to be like and then we celebrated and that was that was really special. Aaron played him Beethoven for the first time and then you could really see that he really lit up. <laughs> you like that music? It's reassuring, definitely. It, it you see it happening and you know you know that it worked. You know, the worry is, will it work? Will it take? Because there is that small percentage that it might not, and it was, it's like, okay, now what? Because <laughs> it's, that's the start of a very, very long journey. We do a lot of work. We literally had like 200 appointments that first year. You go to mapping appointments, you um, see an audiologist, a speech therapist, Dr. Kong, um, his nursing staff, um, learn the Ling sounds. Like every single day you're, you're talking, talking, talking. Web. 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 So it's, it's work, it's every day. It's flashcards every day. The kid either loves or hates his flashcard time. <laughs> depending on how well he's feeling at the time. We learned sign language, we, we learned how to, to speak full words, like saying the whole thing. Right when you think you got it, they give you something more to do and, and then you just keep progressively getting more and more and he's up to four to five words a sentence and we're so pleased. I have a pop. I have a pop. Good. When they told us that with the cochlear implants he'd be needing some speech language therapy. I figured, I wonder if that's available to me. So I started looking into going back to school and about three months after he was born, I started back. I did it for my son, I got in to help him and gradually I found out I'm helping myself and my family and I'm helping so many other families. It's incredible that each chapter that I go through in each class it's, it correlates to his progression in life. So I have that rare aspect of being able to see what I'm learning at home. And when everybody at Boys Town helps us, you know, I, I, I wanna be them. I wanna do what they're doing because I know what it means to the people that they're helping. What color is that umbrella? Blue. You're right. The ultimate goal is to not be able to tell that he was ever affected with hearing loss. Um, I don't want to hide it from the world, but I don't want it to define him. I want people to speak to him and know him as Fletcher. Maybe he'll have a little bit of gear on his head, but he's going to be able to communicate fluently and intelligently and you know, just be a little kid, eventually an, a, an adult. Fletcher F, good work. You first meet Fletcher, you, you notice he's got some, some hardware and some gear going on, but certainly not what you're gonna remember about him. He's a special, special kid, and I just want him to, to grow up like Hudson, like our other son, and just to, just to know that he, he can do anything anybody else can do. We absolutely know every day that we made the right decision. It's a lot of work, but it's, you know, the payoff is, it's every day. It's every, every moment that he reacts to you. Every moment that he says, Daddy, or good night, or I love you. It never gets lost on me. It's been two years, and every time I pop that on his head and say his name and he looks at me, it's like, whew, awesome. Yeah. They're world renowned. We were lucky enough to live, I think they're basically around the corner from us, but people move to Omaha to have them help. It's amazing the staff there, what they do for people. I just wish I could hug all of them all the time. Like, thank you for giving us our son and, and his ability to hear.